One common thing people wonder about when they start developing online and building web pages is why are HTML and CSS separated? It seems like an HTML document could include a lot of the same information that a CSS style sheet includes. Then it would all be in one place, right? It would be simpler, it would be easier to, to understand, I wouldn't have to fetch so many documents when I went to a web page. So why are they separate? Well, there are some really, really good reasons that the two are separate. But let me, uh, let me reveal a little bit of a dirty secret about HTML. You can actually include CSS style properties right inside your HTML, if you want to. This is not considered to be good programming practice, but it is possible. Uh, let me give you an example. So here, go back to our simple page we're working on here before. Um, so here's my uh, HTML. Right now that HTML, oops, there's a broken tag here. Uh, right now that HTML does not have any style attributes. So all this HTML is doing is giving the, the, br the browser semantic information about the page. And that's really how we want it. That's how we want it. Um, however, if I want to include style aspects, I can. So let's say that I want to make this particular paragraph bigger. So what I can do is I can say style, and then I can say font size uh, 40px. Um, okay, so now what I've done is I've added a style attribute to this paragraph. And what happens is when I run it, you'll see that the second paragraph, as promised, is now uh, quite a bit larger than it was before. So this is a paragraph. This is a paragraph that has much bigger text because I set that style attribute. And this is a third paragraph. So I could do it this way. This is a possibility. And you do see, in certain cases, style attributes used in modern HTML, even though there's a lot of standards organizations that are encouraging web developers to stop using them. Um, so why not add style attributes in this way? Well, let me give you an example. So uh, let's say that I want all of the paragraphs on the page to be larger. So one way to accomplish that would be to go over here, and add a style attribute to this guy. Okay, so I've got 40px here. Okay, that's fine. Um, and, and then I'm done, right? So this is good. I'm going to publish this web page. Um, wait, hold on. This is, this is, uh, there's a problem here. Uh oh, okay. So the th I didn't, I forgot this third guy. Um, so you can see the problem here. On, on complex sites with huge amounts of information, adding style attributes on each, um, on each tag is really, really error prone. So it's much, much faster and much easier and much more likely, you're much more likely to get it correct if you just add some CSS. So rather than um, adding this uh, style attribute to each paragraph tag, I can add a new font to one place in the CSS that matches all the paragraph tags on that page. And then when I rerun the page, I've gotten every paragraph bigger. So every paragraph on the page is now larger and I'm in good shape. So that's one reason to use CSS. It allows you to take small numbers of rules and apply them globally. So I can get to every paragraph on the page with just one line of extra CSS rather than having to find all the paragraphs and add those style attributes manually. It also um, is more compact because if you think about it, having to add all those style attributes onto every paragraph tag on the whole page, and once the page gets big, that's a lot of extra, um, that's a lot of extra information that the page has to have, and it's all redundant because all the, I really want all the paragraphs to look the same. The other thing that's really important about CSS is because CSS is separate from uh, the HTML and is retrieved separately, CSS allows me to create style sheets that apply to an entire site. So let me go over here to my group's website. And uh, what you'll notice is that you know there are these common styling aspects in terms of the fonts that we're using. If you go to our projects page, uh, if you go to the papers page, all of these pages look the same. And the reason they look the same is not because we spent hours and hours setting style attributes on all the pages manual. It's because there's one style sheet that they're all using. And so that style sheet makes sure that all elements on multiple pages of the same site look consistent. This is how sites have a look, you know. Why does the Washington Post look one way and, you know, Fox News look a different way? 
right? It's because they're using different style sheets, but because they use the same style sheet internally, they're able to maintain a consistent look to the site across the entire site without making many changes. This also means if you want to change something, like if I got tired of the blue font here and I thought it was hard to read and I wanted to make it a little lighter or a little darker, I could make one change in one place and have lots of different web pages suddenly look a little bit different. So really, really powerful uh, tool here of separating two things and, and, and really you know, gaining a lot of control from that way. So rather than embedding the style information inside the HTML, by separating it into, into separate style sheets, it allows me to make changes more easily. It makes the style representation more compact. It makes sure that the style changes are consistent and allows a bunch of web pages that are served by the same site to look very similar.